Well, this is uh, the very top end of North Dakota. Pemina, Pemina, North Dakota. Next to me is a Saskatchewan guy with a Peterbilt single axle Jeep and a tr regular Tridom trailer. And he has some kind of a machine. Looks like, I don't know, like a big dozer or something. But uh, something that can go off road, like very wide tracks, but probably not too heavy because he only has seven axles so i spent the night here and i was ready to leave at three in the morning uh, because from here to my destination is about 550 kilometers or 300 miles like the border is right there like that's i-29 under that bridge and the border is about i don't know one mile away but this is a good location because they have uh, cheap diesel over here i think i paid two dollars I paid uh, two dollars and four cents. Yes, I filled up both tanks because that's like seventy-five cents a liter in Canada. And they have coffee. They have some, well, not too much food, just some snacks. But I think uh, I found. Uh, I found these somewhere, very nice, um, pork rinds, zero carbs, 8 grams protein, uh, per 14 grams of product. And so yesterday I got my uh, Manitoba permit, we good to go, and at 7.30 yesterday I was sitting uh, just near, somewhere near Sioux Falls. Well, not Sioux Falls, but the town at the very bottom of uh, South Dakota. The town at the very bottom of South Dakota. No, wait. I was sitting in uh, Water, Water Town. Water Town, South Dakota. There was a big TA. Uh, lots of lots of space. And I, I was able just to go through uh, from the pump. There was, you know, a regular double, double uh, lot parking like where dry vans can park right after one another right and so that's 53 like two things two guys with 53 foot trailers so that's like 150 feet so i pulled just the right straight right in front of my my lane at the pump you know that doesn't happen often so i didn't have to do any maneuvering so i slept there oh but before i left yeah i did my uh, pause thing i see you sleep you you slap the sticker on the commercial invoice and I scanned it and emailed it to Livingston and uh, who is the broker or was supposed to be the broker and right away I received uh, I received a confirmation that one file received because they don't read your actual email they only um, they can only work with your attachment you know I tried before writing something in the body of the email it doesn't work it's just a waste of time they said no we only scan the, att the attachment they don't look at the actual email and and so then yesterday I was here around six o'clock just before it got dark and I'm thinking okay I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep till three o'clock and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go and I checked my my border crossing status oh yeah and I did my uh, when I stopped here I did my border crossing through this website I'm using set up everything did my ACI which is the you know manifest you have to do online and I see it still shows uh, it says not matched with trade data like my entry cannot be matched with trade data what that means is that the customs broker did not do his or her part because they do the filing with uh, with the pause number I give them right and then I do the filing with the same pause number and when these two parties the carry and the broker uh, submit these two filings with the same reference number which is pars the sticker uh, that's when everything is good then I see green light in there in the status field on the website and I'm good to go but when it says not matched with trade data that means that there's no filing from the customs broker so I call the Livingston 
and I said guys what's going on I send you like they are notoriously bad you know they can lose your paperwork and I told them I was crossing at five o'clock just to speed things up because if you tell them your actual time they put this in that hour folder and they will not get to your paperwork until like an hour before you know let's say if I want to cross at three and they start working at two and then there's a problem two in the morning you know nothing is going to happen because everything is closed right and so I told them five I'm crossing at 5 p.m. so I call them at 6 30 said guys I have a stamp here on the email that you send me acknowledging the receipt of the file it says 7 35 a.m. standard time and the guy interrupts me does not allow me to finish in a rush you know probably wants to go home or something end of the day and he says uh, yeah we looked at your file and I see here at 9 o'clock 9 o'clock this morning there was a kind of like a determination made that we are not your broker because we could not find these none of these companies on the commercial invoice we could not find find them in our database like uh, we could not find that they have a, uh, an account with Livingston and so that's what we're doing so I started panicking I sent emails to everybody to my broker of course it's like six and uh, seven at night it's seven o'clock at night nobody was nobody could do anything and so I spent the night here Yeah, Larry, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, uh, Livingston, never heard of you. What? Did you ever work with Livingston before? Uh, no, but uh, I, I sent them $12,000. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. oh, dear. Did you, do you have, do you have the, do you have an account number? Uh, yes. Hold on one second, let me grab a pen. Basically, what, what happened yesterday at 7.30 in the morning, I sent them all the paperwork, like with my pass sticker, right? And and then I check, and then I received acknowledgement that, yeah, we received your paperwork, you know, it's automatic thing that they send you. So I was pretty confident that I should be okay. And then I drove all day and I, I stopped one mile from the border in uh, Pemina, Pemina, North Dakota. And this was like six o'clock yesterday. And I call them. And I said, guys, what's going on? I still see uh, nothing is done because my status for crossing is not green. It, it basically says no customs broker entry. Like I did, I did my part, but nobody at Livingston did anything. So I call them and they said, yeah, at nine o'clock we see here, we did uh, like a decision kind of like we rejected your file because we could not find any of these companies on the commercial invoice in our database. Uh, so either we're not your broker or it's a different company name or something but if you could give us like the account number and I, it was already late right so so okay hold on what's the account number okay Okay. Hold on. Yeah, five seven one. Two seven zero five. Actually, yeah, they they sent me this guy's name, Sam. But uh, again, yesterday was too late, right? And I send the paperwork. You know, they have a generic uh, email where you send all your paws submissions it's like cdn imports at livingston intl.com and that's where i send it but i guess they never because your account is new probably they never 
found this guy Sam so I'm gonna call this guy Sam and ask him where I shall send this um, my parts because evidently I cannot use the generic email it just gets lost hello Larry hello Hello? All right, so he has the account. That's good. Now, where is my... And actually, that's the guy they gave me yesterday. But, you know, when you send... Uh, when you send... Um, like I said to this guy, when you send your parts, you don't send it to a particular person, you send it to a generic uh, email address. Okay. Yeah, Sam, hi, my name's Sergey. I'm a trucker. I'm moving a machine for Larry uh, in Minitonas, Manitoba, mountainside uh, unloading. Yeah, he said, uh, basically, I tried that yesterday. I submitted my parts through your generic, you know, CDN imports email, yep. and nothing was done. It was rejected. I called at six o'clock uh, yesterday night, and the guy says, we have no clue who is the customer. We cannot find them. And so I just called uh, Larry. He confirmed that I have his account number. So you know him, right? So, okay, I can give you my, my parts, I can give you my parts number, but it was sent yesterday at 7.30 a.m. It was sent to CDN Imports and I received the automatic confirmation that the uh, file. Yeah, uh, Larry, one second. Okay, pause number is, so four, four, four zeros. And I just, I put it at the bottom. Okay, and you have his account number, right? Yeah, weight weight is ninety thousand pounds. Ninety thousand pound help with that on. Yeah, that's what I use on my on my end. I put. But yeah, no, I see it. I see it here. Okay, let me uh, get this over to the right team to to work on. Uh, okay, all right, thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, Larry, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, everything seems good. Yeah, so yeah, I called this guy. He knows you. Yeah, everything is cool. So basically something, probably that guy was in a rush to go home or something because it was already late. And this guy says he just marked it with a J, which means we're not the broker. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Larry, everything is good. So the Sam is working on your, on your paperwork, okay? Oh boy. So basically everything is good. So the guy has the account and I have the number. So um, so once they straighten this out, I don't know. I don't want to drive during the day, you know, with this huge thing. Too much traffic over there. Uh, couple more things I wanted to show you uh, people were asking how does the uh, overpriced DEFCO system work and I can tell you that I'm pretty ecstatic and how easy it is now to uh, to spot if you have water or not uh, let me show you
So basically it's uh, it's upside down now, right? Just looking at the coolant. Yesterday I had to add coolant. Probably need a new engine. So anyway, so the old one was here, right? And you, there was a screw type of uh, like a nut you had to undo in order to drain it. Like this one, you see? As soon as you see the fuel in there. It means that you have some water because the water is here and the water is heavier and so it pushes the fuel uh, like that pushes it up so let me just drain a little bit i don't see like the fuel is not too high and, the, and there's a tap like much easier there's no screw you just turn this push it down and it starts uh, and it starts draining to here uh, but I did notice right away there's uh, improvement in performance because you know um, I think lots of stations they sell they sell uh, bad fuel so it has water and when you have water of course water does not want to compress inside the engine But I don't know. It's draining now, but the level is not going down. But so it's a much easier system. It's much more um, like it shows you right away if you have water or not. You know, that's what I like. And it's easy to drain because it's just a tap, not a screw. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you is that because I'm entering Manitoba, I cannot use the lift axle. So I had to move my fifth wheel like this. So now I have a huge opening over here. But the machine has been behaving. Occasionally I would just tighten some chains, but everything is good. Didn't hit any bridges. Uh, so I just have five six hours to go I see this is single axle Jeep a very tall trailer Black Hawk at Nair and it's pretty cold uh, Three days ago I was in like 50F plus 10 weather, now it's uh, yesterday was minus 2, today is minus 3, minus 3 is uh, 27F. So it's probably the second time this, uh, this fall that I had to turn on my heater.
No. What? See, that's what happens. When you run the heater, um, it uses the battery power. And when it's cold, uh, the computer just turns off all the power. But... Let me switch on my... Yeah, you see over here, I got a bunch of buttons here. And this one, S bar. If I push that button in the middle, it starts and tries to maintain 72F. And this one, I can do like this. So that's your, these vents over there. And so when it's very cold, or very hot, but of course now it's cold, so I need warm. So I push this button in, like this, when the air conditioning is on, I push this in and that starts the sleeper. That starts the sleeper heater. Or AC over here, so, and then the truck gets to the optimum temperature faster. So that's it, so now I just need to jump on my computer, finish this video, and wait for them to, uh, to submit the paperwork. Um, and so today is Thursday, so I think I'll, I'll be unloaded probably tomorrow morning. And I uh, should, should get my money tomorrow after lunch. Thanks to my uh, factoring company. And I think one more thing I gotta do now is uh, if I still have battery juice in the computer is, uh, if not, I'll have to start the engine because there's no power, I cannot charge the laptop. And I don't remember seeing any, any chairs inside the truck stop where you can sit, but I'll go ask them. Um, but yeah, one more thing I want to do is I want to send out an email. I do it occasionally. Like you, sometimes you probably see on Instagram or Twitter, you see uh, a picture of my truck and it says RGN available. And what that is, is I, I'm using a website, a free website that allows you to do these kind of like news release type of emails that look pretty professional. They don't show everybody's address in the to field. Um, I like that and so I put a picture I put my location I say RGN available when where trying to go this way or trying to go that way like which lane I want to go and I send that kind of like a postcard by email to all the brokers that are in my database and these are the people I worked with or people whose email address I picked up through uh, you know when we when I talk to them via email when we exchange emails if it's a good broker, I see they have a good load, I'll just add the email to the database because you know they've been emailing me, I've been emailing them. So if they don't like it, they can always unsubscribe. There's a, there's a link at the bottom, the way it's uh, you know it's required by law. And so far, this doesn't cost me anything, right? I have I probably have like around 110 contacts in there, and I think I found two loads thanks to this. When I send it out, I say RGN available, and somebody emails me back, hey, we have this load over here. I think that's how I found that uh, Volvo, uh, big excavator from Michigan to British Columbia, you know? Um, so it does work, and so that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, thanks for watching, so next video, actually I recorded much more material, uh, specifically going around Chicago using my true and tested uh, session GoPro Hero session but for some reason uh, and I know it was beeping it was recording but I set it aside because I did the the other one first around Fort Wayne but this was like again POV driving but on that interesting stretch around that uh, pit 
uh, you know, when you enter Illinois from Indiana, they sent me on uh, this Highway 83, 1, 6, it was cool. And I recorded that, but then yesterday I said, okay, finally I'm ready to, to do that video. And I moved the files to my computer, guess what? All the files are still from, from uh, Nevada, when I was sitting in that jackpot Nevada, what? So basically the SD card was full I'm not sure why it was beeping and showing me the red light like it's recording but probably there was some kind of a message I missed so nothing was recorded so I was driving talking like an idiot to myself for two hours no video so now I feel a bit kind of like betrayed and so next time before I use this I'll have to do a test you know I'll have to record something and then open up on the move the file to the computer and see if it's recording so maybe it's time to get rid of it because these are uh, pretty old well not that old but I've been using them you know like super hard uh, where's my second one okay here's the second one but this one that's what the one I used to record the uh, to record uh, the Fort Wayne video and this one still has lots of battery so basically I don't know it looks like yeah because the battery is full and I was using it for two hours when I was driving so that means that it just probably I pushed the button it tried to record probably gave me a message the SD card is full check this out you don't see this every day Argosy Freightliner pulling a flatbed huh and his plate is I cannot see I don't think it's maybe it's Canadian I think it's uh, Saskatchewan but I'm, I can be mistaken maybe Alberta no oh Manitoba that's uh, Manitoba plate and his body is parked next to me because I saw they were talking and this guy this Peterbilt guy you can see in the low in the low part of the mirror it's a uh, cherry colored uh, Peterbilt. Hold on, and he has no, he has new style headlights. But yeah, so so that's what's happening. Now you're up to date. Captain is sitting waiting for the customs paperwork once again. But at least they found the guy. The guy says he sent him 12k, and they said they cannot find him. Well, that 12k it's probably for the they require some kind of a deposit you know like when you open an account he puts money into it and then they start taking money out of that account when they when they charge him for uh, you know a shipment so I'm pretty sure it's like a machine like this should not cost 12,000 to cross the border all right thanks for watching